Okay, good morning everyone. It's my pleasure to um, introduce you to Javier, who is joining us uh, at the SDG Nexus Network as a visiting scientist for a few weeks and has been willing to share his experiences with Insects Amazing Kenya based on his latest experiences, I think, um, at the International Center for Insect Physiology and Ecology. Good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, thanks for having me here. Um, as um, Susan said, my, I will talk today about insects and maize in Kenya, the science behind and opportunities for global partnerships towards sustainable development. So here is an outline of my presentation. First, I will talk uh, a little uh, about me, since you don't know me. Um, after, I will talk about an African technology developed from the knowledge of insect chemical ecology. After that, I will talk about an invasive insect pest and the opportunities for global collaborative, collab collaborative research and the opportunities uh, for achieving the sustainable development goals. At the end, I will talk a little about ideas for the future that need to be landed, and finally, the acknowledgements. So, uh, who I am? I would say that I am an Ecuadorian insect ecologist. I studied agricultural sciences uh, at Universidad de las Fuerzas Armadas ESPE in Ecuador. I did my uh, master in plant science in Wageningen University and Research in Netherlands. And I get my doctorate in biology in the University of Neuchâtel in Switzerland. I was appointed uh, years later as a postdoctoral research fellow at ICIPE, the International Center of Insect Physiology and Ecology in Kenya. And now I am working as a professor of entomology in the career of agricultural science at the Universidad de las Fuerzas Armadas ESPE. I was also trained in science leadership by the GYA. So, uh, first let's talk about insect science and the African technology development from insect chemical ecology. Uh, the maize uh, is the staple food for Africans. S however, the maize crop has several constraints in the east of Africa in general and particularly in Kenya. By uh, 2050, the African population will be 2.5 million that need to be fed. However, maize crop has uh, low yields, approximately one ton per hectare, and it's often cultivated in degraded soils, mainly due to the monoculture practices. It's also attacked by several insect pests, and by a parasitic plant called Striga hermontica. So let's have a look at the insects. Here uh, we can see the spotted uh, stag borer, Chylopartellus. It was originated in Asia, however, now is, is has, it has spread to the Middle East and also to Africa. Here we see uh, the maize stack border, Buciola fusca. It was originated in Ethiopia, but now it has spread to the whole, almost the whole African continent. We call these two insects stem borers because the larvae bore the stem of the maize plant and it uh, starts feeding inside the stem. Afterwards, the plant become uh, weak and eventually it will die. The first reports of Chylopartellus and, uh, as a pest of maize were in uh, 1930. Meanwhile, uh, for Buciola, the first reports as a pest were in 1958. Here we have uh, a beautiful plant with beautiful flowers. It's called Striga hermontica. However, however, it's a parasitic plant. It produces uh, hundreds of seeds, tiny seeds, and when this seed germinates, the roots 
attached to the stem of the maize or the roots of the maize and it starts sucking the nutrients of the maize plant. The maize plant becomes yellowish, weak, it doesn't produce any corns and finally it dies. Um, this plant was originated in Ethiopia and Sudan but now it's uh, spread uh, to Asia, Australia and uh, even some parts of North America. Now we are seeing the fall hormiworm, Spodoptera frugiperda. The origin of this insect is the, Ameri the America, I mean uh, North America, Central America and South America and even the Caribbean islands. The earliest reports of Spodoptera as a pest of maize were in 1919. However, the first recording of fall armyworm in the west of Africa were made in 2016. So uh, we don't know how the fall armyworm uh, switch from America to Africa, uh, but it happens that now is an invasive pest in almost in the five continents of the globe. So the research uh, journey uh, starts about 1995 uh, when um, ICIPE, the International Center of Insect Physiology and Ecology, uh, start doing um, projects in partnership with Rothamsted Research of the UK in order to find solutions for the ecological management of these stem border pests that were the problem at that time. So several projects uh, we were led by Professor Seyaur Khan, uh, who is an Indian entomologist that was appointed to ICIPE. He and his team start doing research in African grasses. I can say that Africa is the cradle of grasses. There are hundreds of species of grasses in Africa and we know that maize uh, is related botanically with uh, grasses. Basically it's a big grass, the maize. So uh, they made a botanical garden with a collection of grasses from Africa and they start studying how the stem borers interact with these grasses, okay? The ecology, basically. So they found a um, grass species, is called Penicetum purpureum, which interacts in a particular way with uh, the stem borer species. I will give the details later. In America and in some places in Africa, maize is often intercropped with uh, legumes. So they start thinking which legumes can be used um, with maize uh, in intercrop in order to find solutions for the insect pests. So uh, here uh, we can see the Smodium uncinatum is a legume and the story is a bit particular because uh, the seeds of this um, plant were found in an agricultural shop. Professor Kang was doing uh, shopping of seeds for her garden and uh, he found uh, a bag with um, the Smodium seeds. He knew that it's a legume and he bought it. Yeah? Uh, we don't know uh, how these seeds came uh, from America to Africa because this plant uh, it's originated in America. Yeah? The origin, the center of origin is America. I would say uh, the whole American continent is the center of origin of this genus Desmodium. Uh, probably the British uh, brought seeds to Africa and um, 
they were using the plant as a fooder for animals and then someone starts selling these seeds yeah so we have the actors of the story a legume from america a grass from africa the pests from africa so they um, decide to sow the smodium seeds between the maize lines and around the maize plot uh, was uh, planted penicetum purpurium that is the grass that i showed before and they also made plots with maize as monocrop they realized that the plants that were intercropped with the smodium were not attacked by the insects they were healthy so they start wondering why so the reason behind is this Penicetum purpurium at the early evening start producing some volatiles, in other words, odors, that are attractive to the females of the stem borers. Yeah? The female lay eggs on the napier, Penicetum purpurium plants. The larvae hatches, but it doesn't develop because Penicetum is of um, very low uh, nutritious value for this uh, larvae and it also uh, produces a sticky substance that uh, traps the, the larvae and eventually it will die. Um, meanwhile, the smodium plants produce other types of volatiles or odors that are repellent to the females of the stem borers. And these uh, volatiles are also attractive to parasitic wasps. The parasitic wasps um, lay eggs on the larvae of the um, stem borers. And this is the way in which the parasitic wasps reproduce. Yeah. But there was a surprising effect also in the plots of push-pull, uh, of um, intercropped with the smodium, yeah? They realized that in the plots intercropped with the smodium plants, there were no striga plants. So they wonder why. After doing uh, experiments, they realized that the smodium uncinatum produce uh, in their roots substance that kill the germinate of the seed of the striga plant. So uh, they call it a suicidal germination. Yeah? So it happens that this system is useful for stem borers and for combating also striga plants. But now you will wonder um, how is the effects of the push-pull plots and the monocrop plots. So um, here we have the mean percentage of plants affected by stem borers um, in two locations. So as you can see in push-pull plots, always the mean percentage of plants affected is less comparing with monocrops. Here we have the mean number of striga plants in push-pull plots and in monocrops. As you can see in the graph, um, fewer plants uh, of striga were found in push-pull plots comparing with maize in monocrop. And now the yield. The maize yield in push-pull plots was higher than in monocrops in two locations of Kenya, yeah? So the benefits of the, they call this system push-pull technology because the smodium is pushing the pest and um, penicetum is pulling the pest as a trap plant, yeah? So the benefits of the push-pull technology in first place are nitrogen fixation because the smodium is a legume and 
it takes uh, nitrogen from the atmosphere and fix it in the soil. Increase of the organic matter in the soil because the all leaves of the desmodium fall down to the soil and in this way increase the organic matter. Also carbon sequestration because uh, penicetum is a perennial crop so you plant it around the maize uh, you can cut it and the plant will uh, regrow later so as the plant gets older carbon is sequestered in the roots of the penicetum grass um, this system of technology provides also food for farmers cattle we know that in Africa farmers have cows or goats so they can cut down a uh, penicetum grass and desmodium also um, leaves and give it to the cattle. In this way they increase uh, milk production in the systems and the income of families also increase. So here you uh, can see a graph of the adoption of the push-pull technology that has increased from 2006 to 2013 um, by now I have the data that 350,000 3, farmers are by now using the push-pull technology in 20 countries of Africa. But now we know that climate is changing, right? So uh, some plants are not adapted to the climate change, yeah? And one of these uh, were the Desmodium uh, species that was first used in this system. So uh, it came the second generation of the push-pull technology or climate smart push-pull. They found a different uh, species of Desmodium, is Desmodium intortum, that is resistant to droughts. So it can be cropped in drought areas. And also a different uh, species of grass that uh, is working or playing the same role than Penicetum. It's called Brachiaria brisanta, variety mulato too, that is also resistant to droughts and they designed the climate adapted push pull by the year 2015 however this system has some disadvantages brachiaria brisanta is susceptible to the acari oligonicus tricardi and the smodium in tortum uh, plants doesn't produce seeds near to the latitude zero so it comes the third generation of the push-pull technology. They found uh, different, uh, two different varieties of Brachiaria brillesanta, Xares and Piata, that are resistant to the acari, and two different uh, species of Desmodium, Desmodium incanum and Desmodium ramosissimum, that can produce seeds at the latitude zero. So um, all these genetic materials were coming from SIAT, is the International Center of Tropical Agriculture. And this show us the power of collaboration, right? Uh, just uh, to, s I will use this uh, slide to say that the push-pull technology can be used for other crops, for example, sorghum and it works in the same way. But now we go back to the Spodoptera frugiperda, the fall ormyworm. Remember that the first recording of this pest in West Africa was in 2016. The governments of Africa start um, importing tons of chemicals and uh, spraying a lot in African countries because uh, they were worried of uh, this new pest and they didn't know how to control it. 
things made is that they are a staple food, right? So here uh, in this uh, small video, we can see how the form army worm has uh, spread from America and the Caribbean to West Africa, south and east of Africa, India, and even to Australia, Southeast Asia, and now it is found in uh, Japan, Korea, and China as well. The uh, scientists are always uh, making questions. So they found that the climate adapted push pull system was also effective uh, for controlling the fall army war. By, but uh, we didn't know why. So um, is how uh, the project of my postdoc start. Uh, we um, had two hypotheses. Yeah, the first one was that Brachiaria mulato two was acting or uh, playing a role of a repellent plant against the females of Spodoptera frugiperda, and also the smodium plants were playing the same role. And the hypothesis too was that um, both the Smodium and Brachiaria mulato too were attracting parasitic wasps. And since uh, I don't have much time, I will only explain how we um, target the hypothesis one. So we did uh, some experiments of oviposition of Spodoptera frugiperda. So basically we uh, had an insect cage. Inside we put uh, a potted plant and we release five uh, gravid females in order to let them lay eggs. Yeah. And uh, since I work it a lot with this insect, I can say that uh, the female of Spodoptera has an and a scrupulous of position behavior. She lay eggs on the plants, but also on the cage and even in the screen of the, in the mesh of the cage, right? So she all only wants to release its eggs to uh, produce the, the following generation. So here we have an, um, a graph, yes in which uh, we counted the number of eggs lay on the plants and the number of eggs lay on the cage. So when we uh, had maize plants alone in, uh, in the cage, the number of eggs were much higher on the plant than in the cage. When we put a maize plant together with a Desmodium uncinatum plant, more, lays, uh, more eggs were laid on the cage than in the maize plant. When we put a maize plant together with a Desmodium intortum plant, it happens the same. More eggs were laid on the cage than in the maize plant. And the same happens when we put um, the Smodium intortum alone or the Smodium uncinatum alone. When um, we put a plant of Brachiaria together uh, with maize, it happens uh, that we got the same number of eggs in Brachiaria and uh, in the cage and on the plant. So, here uh, uh, I show some uh, results of the field experiments. We have several locations uh, in Kenya and the number of Spodoptera larvae in 100 plants in push pool um, plots and in monocrop plots. So always in monocrop plots the amount of larvae were higher comparing with push pool plots. This occurred uh, in the short rain season and the, sh the same occurred in the long rain season. So now it comes something more interesting, the sustainable development goals. <laughs> How to achieve the SDGs through global collaborative research in insect science. So 
we see that uh, we can achieve the objective number 13, climate action, because we have some benefits like nitrogen fixation, natural ni nitrogen fixation, increase of organic matter in the soil, and carbon sequestration. We can target the SDG number one, no poverty, the number two, zero hunger, number three, good health and well-being, because this system provides food for farmers' cattle, increase meal production, and increase income of families. In this slide, uh, we have a more detailed um, overview of how the push-pull technology can target the SDGs. I will not go in detail. So now I have given an example on how insect science in the domain of plant health can help us to achieve the SDGs. But we can do insect science on human health, environmental health, and also in animal health, right? And we can also target the 17 SDG, partnerships for the goals. So, how we can connect countries through insect science? We can work on South-South cooperation research, collaborative research, South-North cooperation. I'm sure that we can put another flag there, the German. <laughs> or we can make triangular cooperation, right? So with this, I want to uh, give my acknowledgments to the persons that make possible my visit here. Susan Jacobs, John Besser, Matthias Hocher, and the whole SDG Nexus Network for making it possible. And I say thank you in all the languages. <laughs> and here are my contacts in case I get lost. Thank you.